Hi, I'm Alistair and I'm going to talk to you today about how to use the swivel to record your lectures, uh, including your slides and video, uh, simultaneously. So, what do we need to do this? Well, you'll need a swivel unit, obviously, and this is what we're recording on right now, and I'm demonstrating its ability to move by moving. So, you'll need one of these, and you'll need a recording device. Uh, we tend to use uh, Apple products, uh, iPads seem to fit the bill nicely as well as a lightning to HDMI cable and an HDMI cable as well. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to download the Swivel app. Uh, go on to your iPad, get on to Wi-Fi and download and sign up, log in, all that stuff on your iPad. Now, before you go any further, uh, you need to think about the slides you are going to use in your recording. Uh, should you want to have a certain configuration where you've got slides and then there's video inside the slides, then you'll need to alter the way you've spaced out the information on your slides. So you'll see in an old PowerPoint there, everything is basically taking over the whole space. In the new iteration, uh, I've left space at the bottom right hand corner. Uh, if you want to put the video there. If you want it in the top left corner, then you would make space uh, for that. Now, if you want to record uh, in a way that I've chosen, that's side by side, you have the video and the slides beside each other, then you don't need to change anything at all. Okay, so once you've done that, the next thing to do is to actually get the slides onto Swivel. Uh, now, you'll need to go onto your computer, your desktop, or your laptop to do so. Go onto the Swivel Cloud website, and drag and drop your PowerPoint uh, file uh, into the appropriate box there. Unfortunately, those of you who have video or animations in your PowerPoints, you will not be able to use them. The Swivel doesn't recognize these as yet. Okay, so now get your iPad again and go onto the Swivel app because you need to select your file. Uh, when the file is being processed by the Swivel Cloud, uh, it then becomes available on the Swivel app on your iPad, and all you need to do is press present, and away you go. Now, if you're actually using this recording not in the way I am, where I'm just recording myself and using the slides as a prompt, then you'll want to mirror. There's two ways of going about this. There's the easy way and the hard way, and we're just going to talk about the relatively easy way today. Uh, the harder way is wirelessly, and I've got to set up there in the picture where I've done that, and that involves using uh, Apple TV. And I've got a separate set of slides which I can do a recording with to show people how to do that should they wish. So, now let's talk about the actual swivel itself. The unit doesn't do any recording, so you need the iPad, as I said before, to do the recording itself. Um, all it does is basically track you. That's what it does. Um, now, the unit can be turned on just by pressing the button to the right, a long press of about five seconds, and the unit will come on. You'll know it's on because the red light comes on and it moves up and down. Okay? You'll need to connect it to uh, Bluetooth, so turn a Bluetooth on on your iPad and search for swivel and make that connection. Once it's connected, this button on the left will go green. The next thing you need to do is retrieve the controller microphone. The controller microphone is what I'm holding here. It has three purposes. Uh, it has a, a microphone. You can probably hear me louder than you, than you were. Uh, it's a tracker, which is what the unit tracks. And not the individual, and this can bring uh, certain issues when you're recording. So if I move around too much and too close to the uh, swivel unit, it can be distracting. So I do recommend that you use a lanyard. You can slot it in there, wear it around your neck, and you don't need to think about this as much. The other problem is sometimes people play with the controller when they're speaking, uh, unconsciously I'm sure, and this makes uh, for lots of interesting noises because there's a microphone in it as well and that's what's picking up the sound. Uh, the other thing is that it's a slide advancer so I can go back and forth uh, with these buttons and the middle button can be configured to have different uh, functions. Uh, in this case I've configured it so that it stops the unit from, from moving. Okay. So, after we've got this 
on, we need to connect it to our recording device, the iPad, and we need to think about plugging in the audio. If you don't plug the 3.5mm jack into the iPad, sound, uh, the recording, will come through the iPad itself and not through the mic, and it will be rubbish. Uh, something to consider uh, when you're recording, and it's worth practicing and doing this uh, as a dry run uh, on a couple of occasions before you actually decide to lecture with it, uh, is where you're going to put it. So uh, when I was uh, taking these pictures, I found some boxes to, to uh, put the iPad on, on top of, iPad answerable, on top of, to make it uh, so that it was elevated and it wasn't looking so far from, from the ground and looking straight up. Um, if you have a tripod, even better. That's what I'm using right now. Um, the other consideration is how close you're planning on being to the uh, unit. If you're too close, it tends to um, try and find you a lot. It tends to move around up and down, left and right, and it can be distracting for individuals watching the recording. Um, so try and find a sweet spot uh, where you're still in picture, uh, relatively, uh, well, relatively good in picture, I suppose. I'm not sure the exact grammar on that. Um, but not too close that it's constantly moving. Also, if you choose to record uh, with the uh, controller mic in your hand, be aware that, that it will follow your hand and not your head. Okay, so back to the actual um, presentation in the room. Uh, you'll need to connect it to whatever system it is that you're recording in. So uh, at our university, uh, we have a uh, console which uh, has a usually a VGA or an HDMI cable or input uh, and we uh, have to select this on the uh, controller unit. How we go about doing this depends again on, on the configuration of the room but generally there's a button you press like laptop or VGA or HDMI and it's also on the screen and you should be at this point mirroring. Now in order to do so, if I go back a little bit, you'll see in the picture at the bottom right is the lightning cable which connects to the VGA or the HDMI which then connects to, to the, the console. And hopefully it looks something like this. Okay, now uh, one of the final steps is then to uh, set this up and turn it on. I, I, I suggest you do this lastly because if you set the, the mic up controller uh, earlier on in the process it'll, it'll, may, it'll mean basically the unit will cheat, try and move around as you set it up and it can be quite frustrating. Uh, so yeah, so one of the final steps is to turn the, the, the mic controller on. Uh, this is a simple procedure. On the side there's a little button, uh, the on button, the top, uppermost button. If you long press that, about five seconds, a green light will come on and the unit will start tracking. And then when you're ready to record, the button below is the one you press. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see in this light. It's slightly overcast, but at the same time, bright. British weather, eh? Okay. And uh, after you finish recording, um, if you've got it automatically to set up so that it, it, it sends the recordings off to the Swivel Cloud, which I have, uh, then fair enough. If not, you need to press the little button, uh, or digital button, on the iPad that has a little picture of a cloud, and that will send it to the Swivel Cloud, and you'll be able to access it on your desktop. And from there, you get to choose the configuration. I alluded to this initially about how you would set up the actual PowerPoint uh, with the end video production in mind. Uh, so this is your, your chance to choose where you want to put the video and, and how you want to produce it. Uh, I suggest you save it in the cloud as well and, and, and then produce. At the configuration stage, choose the way you want to put it, video inside the slide or side by side, and away you go. Um, lastly, you can either produce it so that you export the file to your hard drive or uh, a new feature which is really nice is that you get an embed code and you cut and paste that into your virtual learning environment. Ours in this case is, is Blackboard and in the Blackboard you just press a button HTML and drop the code in there and uh, in a really nice way it just pops up on your VLE. Um, just a note. In this particular recording I'm making, I've chosen to have the screen of the iPad facing me as I'm using it as a prompt. 
uh, if you were going to actually do what I'm advocating in this uh, video and uh, and use this as a, as a mirroring device, then you won't need that, and you can just use the uh, television or the projector as a means of uh, finding out where you are in your presentation. Uh, I say this because the camera is better on the rear-facing camera is better on the iPad, and you get a better quality video than the one that's being shown to you currently. Hope you found this of use, and uh, thanks.